All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the basics of something called the ice chart, which is used primarily for uh, reactions that are in equilibrium. And so therefore, since we have, in, in a lot of cases, we have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction, um, it doesn't simply just, you know, go forward. It could also go in the reverse direction. And... Um, it gets kind of complicated and it's not really that simple so um, there's this thing called the ice chart which you see in front of you that uh, is basically bookkeeping and keeping uh, you know with um, well let me just explain so in the in the first column well, well basically what the ice stands for is the I stands for initial concentration the C stands for changing concentration the E stands for the equilibrium concentration so all the concentrations that you see in this table are in molar, right? So that's moles per liter. So for the initial concentration, this first row, um, say for example, we have, right? So consider the, the, the reaction A goes reversibly to B plus 2C, which is governed by a K that is uh, 2 times 10 to the negative 4, for example. And let's say that initially we have... Uh, let's see, initially we have two moles of A, right, so that's two, um, actually, let's just make this a different color here, uh, we have two moles of A, we have one mole, one mole of B, and one mole of C, right, so that's a, that is a one mole of C. Now, for the change in concentration, um, this is going to be represented by variables, usually x. And the the most the, the the kind of difficult part here is trying to figure out whether the reaction is going in the forward or the reverse direction. Um, a lot of times, you can just tell uh, that the reaction is going to go either in the forward or the reverse just by intuition and using Le Chatelier's principle. But if you if you're not sure, we can you can actually calculate something called the um, the reaction quotient, which is uh, called Q, and Q is going to be the the concentration of the products of the reaction. So that's B and two C in this case divided by the reactants. Right. So then. For this case, it would be the concentration of the products, which would be the concentration of B, times the concentration of C squared, remember the stoichiometry, divided by the reactant, which is the concentration of A. All right. so in this case, uh, this would be 1 divided by 2, right? And so therefore, that's 0 0.5, and so therefore, uh, Q is going to be greater. This is the important part. You have to figure out whether this Q is going to be greater or less than uh, K. So in this case, obviously, 0 0.5 is greater than 2 times 10 to the negative 4. So if Q is greater than K, then we know the reaction is going to go in the forward direction. If Q is less than K, then we know the reaction is going to go in the reverse direction, right? So in this case, the reaction based on the calculation of the reaction quotient, it's going to go in the forward direction, right? So let's just get rid of this. All right, so this reaction is going to go in the forward direction. Now, based off that, what do we do for the second column? So we know that it's going in the forward, right? So then, therefore, A, the concentration of A, we know is going to decrease, right? So it's going to be decreasing by some value x. And if it's going in the forward, B and C are going to increase, right? So this is going to be a plus some variable. And then C is going to increase since this is, uh, since we have two C's for every A and B in this reaction. This is going to increase by two times this, two times the variable, right? So then therefore, the equilibrium concentration is going to be the initial concentration. If you just think about it, um, the initial concentration and then plus or minus some change, right? And so therefore, this is going to be, um, let's just write this as two. So this is, so the equilibrium concentration is going to be two, um, there we go, two minus x, 
and then b is going to be 1 plus x, right, because we have one molar plus some variable, and then c is going to be 1 plus 2x. All right, so now what? How do we, so basically the, the whole idea is to solve for this, this variable and then be able to plug it back into the table, solve for everything, and then you basically know the concentration of all the species. So we know that the, at equilibrium, uh, the concentrations are governed by K, right? So we know that K is going to be equal to the concentration of the products, right? The concentration of the products divided by the reactants, right? So this is, so the reason why K is different from Q in that it's after they react. Q is before, right, initially, before they react, right? So this is, so then K, let's write this a different color. So, uh, so K, so then two times 10 to the negative four is going to be equal to the concentration of the products of the reactants, right? So then we have the concentration of B. In this case, it is one plus X times one plus two X divided by the reactant, which is two minus X, right? And so basically what you would do here, you would uh, solve for x and plug back in. And then therefore, you know that, you know, you basically know all the equilibrium concentration if you know x, right? So say, for example, if x was 1, then we know that the equilibrium concentration of A would be 1. We know that the equilibrium concentration of B would be 2, and the equilibrium concentration of C uh, would be 3. I'm not actually going to solve this here. Uh, just for the sake of time, but we'll definitely uh, do a couple examples on the ice chart and equilibrium in general. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped, and we will see you all in the next video.